Well, I think you'll really like this next one. I call it the fire ribbon. And what it is, basically, is a reverse fire thong. So what do I have here? I have a uh, two by three stud. And what I've done is epoxied and screwed in uh, two more blocks of the stud on each side. Supported also with an L, um, I don't know what you call this. A, uh, it's for uh, joining studs together. So it's an L, which is screwed in together. You get these at the hardware store, just for support. And the bolts here actually go all the way through the top. And here I've created uh, two little bamboo device pieces with holes that go through the bolts on each side. Okay. And how this is going to work is, is you take your rattan or your bamboo. In this case, we're doing bamboo. Nice, thick, walled piece of bamboo. Okay, and I've taken a strip, and what I'm doing is I'm putting the uh, cable clamps on the ends of this um, ribbon. And what this will do is this will tuck through here like this. Now the clamp on the end here when you push down on this that keeps the end from sliding in okay so that's clamped down then we're going to clamp down this other end down here okay hold on one sec I had to take some wood off the end of that bamboo so that I could fit the clamp on We're going to clamp this side down, and we want it to be flat and even. Okay, so the inside of the bamboo is facing up, and the skin, the outside of the bamboo, is facing down. Okay. So we're going to clamp this down. So it doesn't go anywhere. I even wanted to dent the bamboo. I want it to be that tight so I know it's not going anywhere. That seems pretty secure. So the next thing we do is get these nuts and bolts together. Make sure this is nice and tight down here. Now I know that's not going to go anywhere. You can see it has some flex in it. And that's really the reason why I designed this. Okay. Because you have to do your best to get rattan or bamboo that can go in a complete U and not break as it goes around your base, right? Well here, in this case, 
you don't have to get that severe a bend. It's only going to dip down a little bit. Now I have to put a new hole inside the sodal base. So I'm going to do that now and then we're just going to hit it. Okay. Alright, so I put a brand new hole in the sodal. Okay. I'm going to put just a small little plug of jute in on the back side. Kind of hold the temperature in a little bit. Okay. Now I already took all the splinters off our ribbon. All right, so I guess we're ready to go. Now the L's, the metal L's, as you could see, they make wings here for where I've double clamped the uh, our fire ribbon to the table. So I think we're ready to go. Just for laughs. going to wrap the handle a little bit, save myself from the, the edges. Okay. Starting to glaze. go. There's our coal. The reverse fire saw. Very nice, huh? So, Still, you know, you're limited on material. So what I'm going to be doing is experimenting with this to see if other woods are going to be able to withstand this, just like that, if you just have a strip. So that's what I'm going to be doing in the future with this device, to see if there can be some flexible woods that are beyond just uh, rattan and bamboo. Now I still don't think there's really anything out there that's going to have that severe U bend that rattan and bamboo can do. But because it doesn't need that severe bend, there may be other woods that are more tolerable. So I'm going to be experimenting with that. Alright, let's keep going. So I want you to see how I'm applying this different variation. So what we have here is uh, some cord which is wrapped around uh, somewhat like the fire thong except it has no notches. And on something this smooth, I actually can't put notches in this because it's a pithy uh, stalk. And what this is is rose. It's wild rose. Okay, as you can see the, all the bark is taken off. This is a 11 inch, a little bit over, oh, 
11 and a half inches in length. Okay. It's just a hair under 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. And so what I've done here is I drilled a hole and then placed a nail through it. And that stops the, the cord so that it cinches down. And then I have two more knots here, double knots. And you'll see what those are for. So I did the same on this end. So how this one's going to work is I place the blade in between and then I take the bamboo pieces that would secure this and that goes down here. That stops the, the knot from going anywhere. So that keeps that from pulling through. And I only need to cinch that down that much. There's a nail that sticks out here that goes all the way through this block and that goes around there just as a backup if for some reason this should slip so we secure the same over here put it around the nail put our bamboo piece on secure it with the two nuts on the bolts we hand tighten those down And there's our, our piece. Okay. Now our uh, yucca. Here I have a 5 16 inch hole with a groove on it. As you can see, there's nothing in the hole. We are going to take just a small a little bit of jute and shove that in the into this one here the one with the groove All right. and I think we're ready to, to give this a shot so this has to be mated warmed up Maybe I should change that angle miss the hole a little bit. <laughs> and we got a call. Rose Branch Yucca Base.
All right. So that was a branch of rose suspended by two cords, much like a fire thong and reverse method of a base. All right, let's keep going. Okay, and welcome to our next fire ribbon. And uh, we're still using yucca as a base. We're going to reuse this hole here, this third one, away from the end. You can see it has a groove in it. You can see it's empty. It's a 5 16 inch hole. So we're going to use this side. Our ribbon today is hickory. It's a quarter inch by a quarter inch and it's um, 11 inches in length. Okay. Has holes in it for the nails and uh, so let's put this through our cord. Let's put a nail through. should hold just like that. And this one should go through here like that. Nail through. Alright, I think we're ready to give this a shot. So, again, we're going to use this third one here. You can see there's nothing in the in the notch. We're going to put a bit of tinder on the back side, holding some heat. So we have to get this mated and warmed up. Hopefully this time I'll keep the, the hole straight. You can see it's flexing. Let's do a little bit more speed. And there's our coal. Give me a minute. So flexible hickory, a piece of flexible hickory, and it was just about ready to go. So on Yucca Base.
All right, let's keep going. Okay, so for our next fire ribbon, um, this is one of my light bows for the bow drill for workshops and things like that. The bow itself is made out of a branch of uh, blueberry. It's a native blueberry of New Jersey from the Pine Barrens, south, southern New Jersey. And uh, so I'm going to take this. Cut it down to about 11 inches and put it in our fire ribbon apparatus here. Alright, so I'm going to prepare it. We'll be right back. Okay, so we're ready to give this a shot. Our blueberry is in place. Scraped all the bark off. Okay, we're going to do a yucca. There's a little bit of jute in back, but there's nothing inside, as you can see. We're ready to get started. So it needs to get mated and warmed up. It has a bit of a pith, so we're hoping that this is going to hold up. And there we go. Blueberry. Blueberry on yucca. Or I should say yucca on blueberry. All right. Fire ribbon. Native New Jersey blueberry. All right. Let's keep going. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to give you <laughs> the measurements. Um, this is a 5 16 inch uh, blueberry. And the hole that was in the um, yucca, that's also a 5 16 inch. Okay, just so you know what the sizes were. All right, let's keep going. Hey, welcome back to the fire ribbon. We're going to do rows again, except with a little bit of a change. Here I have some thicker uh, uh, branches that came off that uh, rose shrub. And uh, so I'm going to take the thickest one that I have here. And uh, let's see, how long is this one? This one's 11 inches too. Actually, let's try this one. Since it's already about 11 inches. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to split it just like as if it was a uh, rattan. So what we're going to do is we're going to quarter this one. So let's get it in half first, and what we're going to do is we're going to carefully split this one out down the middle. There we go. Okay. Then we're going to quarter it. 
This might not come out very even, but I'm going to take the largest one. Okay, so it didn't split correctly. But here I have uh, about a quarter section. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the pith out. Because that's going to be useless. And uh, I'm going to get this set up in here as a strip. I'm even going to leave the bark on the back. Um, because if you know about bow making, okay, when you select wood, the wood on the outside is uh, going to flex, okay, but the wood on the inside is going to compress, and that's what we want. So when we lay it down in the fire ribbon, this side is going to flex, and this side is going to compress, much like a bow would if you're going to shoot a bow and arrow, okay? So uh, let me clean this up. We're going to put this in here and give it a shot. Okay, so I think we're ready to give this a try. You can see the bark is still on the back. Clean this up a little bit. We're going to use, uh, let's see. Let's use this groove right here on this yucca, this third one on the back. And... Take a little bit of jute that I have here. And we're just going to put a tiny bit of it in there just to hold some of the some of the heat in. So this has to be mated, warmed up. didn't burn in the center. Well, it burned on the sides and where the pith is you can see it didn't cause much friction. Here let me show you. See the grooves on the side? That's where the friction was and where the pith was, there was no friction. So it would have been nice if there was friction in the middle. So there's a lesson. Let's keep going. Okay, so here's what we're doing. If, uh, if we take our rose, which has a pithy center, or most branches, a lot of branches do, okay? Here, here's an example of a rose. If we take that cross section, and let's say we uh, quarter it again, okay, you get a section like this, but there's pith in the middle. Well, we use that strip, but here's what happened, right? We got burn marks on each side. Because of these places here and here. Okay, and that was the burn 
this is where the friction was. So we're going to try that again. We're going to take a, a strip like this and we're going to make it more like as it should be if it was a, a fire thong reload uh, blade and we're going to round it off if this is a cross section so that the friction stays in one place right on right on top okay so uh, let's uh, let's work on that keep going Okay, so we're going to try something a little different. Here's our uh, original fire ribbon apparatus. Right? Well, we're going to do a little bit of an experiment with our reverse uh, fire saw apparatus. You might remember this. Um, we would put our one foot uh, hickory saw in there. Well, the rattan that's used for these um, pillars, they are split. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some cord, just like our blue ones, except these are longer, and we're going to be securing these, just like we did before, around our material, okay, with a nail because it's going to slip off. And that's going to go through these um, cracks in the in the rattan. Now, how this is going to be held in place, because obviously this will come through, is we're going to use hose clamps. So the hose clamps will go around the pillars, and uh, as this gets strapped in, we'll just wrap it around again, and then clamp it down. Okay. So that should secure that. So uh, I'm going to prepare this and we'll be right back. So our next material that we're going to try on our fire ribbon is box elder. So we're going to take a large branch of box elder, we're going to cut it down, strip it down, and prepare it for making a ribbon, okay? So what I'm going to do is uh, take this branch, which is approximately uh, three quarters of an inch in diameter, and you can see it has a little bit of a pith in it. We can't use the pith, so what we have to do is, uh, what I'm going to do is quarter this, get rid of the pith, and shape it like as if I was using a rattan blade for a fire thong, okay? So uh, let me prepare this and we'll be right back. Alright, so we're ready to try our box elder. Um, instead of quartering it, I just did a half, so here's a half. You can see the pith is down the center. Now the piece that I did, uh, I left the material on the ends, as you can see it's half. And then uh, I took out uh, the sides and rounded the top. I even left the bark on the back, because that really doesn't matter. And ho hopefully it'll help actually support that. Um, again with the bow principle, you know, bow and arrow, the outside flexes, the inside um, compresses, so hopefully that's going to withstand what we're doing. All right. Looks a little bit like our rattan uh, reloading blade for our fire thong. So that's going to fit in our cord here between the knots. one and then what we do is here take this hose clamp off or loosen it and we 
pull out our cord. And we <coughs> secure this side as best we can. Pull that through very tightly. Wrap it around once. Put it through again. Pull. Wrap it around the other side. Put it through. Cinch it down and tighten our hose clamp. In this case, I mean, we could put a knot here, do it that way. There's many ways we could set this up to secure this. We're just doing it this way for now. And now it's nice and suspended. All right. So, our blade is nine inches uh, total, but between the knots is seven inches, which is really all we need. Okay. And what we're going to do is use our yucca again. Um, we're going to use this top one here. You can see there's nothing in the hall. It's a 5 16 inch hall. Um, at its widest here, I think that's about here, it's uh, a little under half an inch. So about maybe 5 about 5 16 So let's put a little jute on the opposite side. Help hold in heat and the dust that will collect. And we're ready to give this a shot. Alexa. Let's get this warmed up. We made it actually warmed up. Let's put a little bit of let's get rid of blazing. There's our call, box elder on yucca. Very nice. Box elder blade, ribbon, yucca base. Very nice. Let's keep going. Okay, so our next fire ribbon attempt uh, is going to be some willow. So this is a dead branch of willow, which I uh, actually found on the ground. And uh, with the bark on, this, the diameter of this is 7 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to cut this to the appropriate size, get a ribbon in there, and uh, see how it goes. Be right back. Okay, so we're ready to try our willow. All right. And uh, this is a half. So I quartered the other half. All right. And out of the other quarter, I made a blade reload. So I made a ribbon. All right. I left the bark on the other side. This uh, is kind of semi-rounded on top. It's cleaned up. As you can see, it has the uh, the knocks in it. So we're going to load this in. It goes 
on our first one. to our knock, put that through, our hose clamp raised up, get it as tight as we possibly can, pull it through, again, wrap it around the other side, pull it through again, keep it tight, and cinch it down. Again, we're doing yucca. Five sixteenths inch hole. As you can see, there's nothing in there. We're going to do this one here. And uh, again, we're putting jute on the other side to help hold in heat. And I think we're ready to go. Move my knife over. Get some room to groove here. So we have to get this mated, warmed up. Getting a little bit of friction now. There's a cone there somewhere. Let's see if we can knock it out. There it is. Woo. Willow fire ribbon with yucca. Very nice. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so we're ready to try our next fire ribbon example. And here, what we have in here already is some apple. This is the same uh, apple that came down in my neighbor's backyard during that uh, snowstorm in October. And uh, I've taken actually this branch and cut a section off here. Okay. This is half, half that came off. The other half is here as the ribbon. Okay, I have knocks in there. You can see I have the bark on the back. Okay, This is rounded off here. You can see I've started mating it a little bit already. This is 3 eighths of an inch wide, 3 eighths of an inch tall. Okay, And we're still doing yucca. So as you can see there's nothing in the notch hole here that we're going to use. All right. Let's put our tinder on the top and I think we're ready to go. Let's get this warmed up and lit.
not much in the hole. I'm gonna leave that dust in there. And I'm gonna come back and try that one more time. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna try that again. The dust is still in there. It's just the way I left it. You can see it's not smoking. The uh, jute is still on top. Okay. So I have to get this warmed up again. Got it this time. Apple on yucca. And there we go. All right. Another fire ribbon. Okay. Okay, welcome to the epimethei section of the fire ribbon and a uh, couple of uh, reminders and final things. For one thing, I'm actually very excited about uh, this one basic uh, technique. Um, it's almost like a, a marriage of the uh, fire saw and the fire thong. But you know, in, but basically, it's just a uh, reverse fire thong, and uh, I'm very excited about it because in in the world of primitive technologies, there it's very rare to come across something uh, new, you know, um, because basically, it's in nature, it's with humans, it's been done. Um, so it's exciting to 
discover different techniques and methods from around the world if they're not part of your continent or your culture or things like that. Um, Fire Thong, for example, never made it in the, uh, in the New World, in, on, in the Americas. And because as far as we know, uh, there are only two materials that you can use for a fire thong. There's rattan and there's bamboo, right? And uh, unless you count river cane, none of those are in the Americas. So it's, it's no surprise scientifically that that method is in, in the Americas. Um, so I've been racking my brains out thinking about how a fire thong method could be done uh, domestically over here and I think this is really it I think it's uh, and I, for me it's a very exciting thing because I think it's something that in the primitive technology world um, can really take off because um, of all the uh, techniques that you've seen these civilized variations and things like that this one being uh, very primitive all you would need is like two saplings close together or two very strong stakes in the ground and you suspend you know that ribbon in between with some cordage and all you need is a softwood base and at this point you know um, as far as I know I'm, um, I've only used sotal and yucca but, uh, and then you just do the reverse fire thong method. What's great is you can use, uh, oh, what could be a huge variety of branches out there of trees and shrubs, because we've done rows, right? I'm sh if, uh, if I can't answer the question of what material works, it's only because I haven't tried that material yet and so uh, I mean basically if you take a branch um, starting at uh, three-eighths of an inch like the rose um, that itself could be your ribbon and if you get larger than that all you have to do is split it down like bamboo or rattan like we would and you know like here's the apple Split that down, make your your ribbons, your reloading blades, and just pop them in there. And uh, so what this does is it opens up a whole new um, world of available materials to make friction fire. Okay? Things you would never have thought of. Now you would look at a branch like this and you would go, oh, that, that could be a spindle, right, and do a drill method. But imagine looking at this and going, I could do a linear method. I could do the fire thong, reverse fire thong. So I'm very excited about it. Uh, um, so some things to remember about this technique that, that we've come up with here. Um, when you have this here, okay, the ribbon in here, and you're working the base back and forth, if you favor one side, if one side is more dominant than the other, sometimes you tend to push in that direction, okay? But what you have here is like uh, a hammock between trees, and you'll start pushing to one side, you'll start pushing to the other side, and you'll get that version of drift. It'll drift over to that side of the hole. If you push the other side, it'll drift over to the other side of the hole. So you want to avoid that drift because it, it does happen. Another thing is, is if you have a round base, which you're most likely going to have, you have to be very careful that the hole is lined straight up and down perpendicular because if you turn this slightly off perpendicular off the hole, you're, the dust is not going in the hole at all, which has happened to me multiple times. You're just shoving the dust all over the, all over the bottom there. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, 
Another important thing to remember is the grain, which is what makes this really great, this method, is you never have to really worry about grain run out so that your, your, your blade, your ribbon, doesn't just break right where the grain runs out. Um, with a branch, you pretty much know that the grain runs straight across parallel. So when you do these splits, like this half here, you know, you know exactly where the grain is, okay, at all times. So knowing that your grain is completely parallel and straight uh, consistently throughout the ribbon is very important, okay? That's going to add to the strength. Um, the back side is going to be for flex. The inside is going to be for compression in the bow principle, like the bow and arrow principle, as it bends. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, keep the cords between the saplings and these pillars or the stakes as tight as possible, okay? When, uh, when you're suspending this, make sure it's really, really tight and uh, there's no, you don't want slack in here because um, as flexible as this is, you don't really want it to flex much. Um, when you do that, what ends up happening is the dust doesn't actually collect very well in the hole and it starts to just shave off and uh, fall to the bottom. The straighter this is, the more linear it is, the better the dust goes straight into the, the hole notch. Okay, so keep this really nice and tight. Don't have it really any slack in there. Um, I don't think you have to have jute on top, but I like to have it in there. It just lets me know that the heat is uh, being maintained in there. And uh, cause we're trying to raise that temperature, right? That's what gets the ignition. Uh, what else can I tell you? Let's see. Diameter thickness. So if you have a 3 8 inch, that could possibly well be your ribbon. If it's too pithy, which I've discovered with most plants, uh, it actually can't work because it's too fragile, it'll break. Um, the more wood you have that's actually grain wood, the stronger it's going to be, okay? But I'm still looking. I'm still practicing. I'm still training, all right? Still, you keep going. So when you get into thicker sizes, like the three-quarter inch, seven-eighths inch, that's when you could start splitting them down like you do with the rattan for a fire thong um, blade making, okay? Uh, so wall thickness is very important. If you, uh, for example, like the box elder that I have, um, it has a pith, but you do have to make sure that the wall thickness is really thick enough. It definitely has to be over a quarter inch uh, tall once you've split it down, all right? Definitely over that. Um, I'm liking the sizes of around three eighths of an inch overall. And I like to have the hole almost exactly the same width, the hole here in the base, almost exactly the same width as the ribbon. So I've even had it slightly smaller, so the dust doesn't seem to scatter as much. So like I'll have a three eighths inch um, ribbon and the five sixteenths inch hole, like something like that. But try not to let your dust scatter. You need that dust, right? So what else? I think that's it for now. So I hope you enjoy the fire ribbon. Um, I think it's one of my most, I think it's going to end up being one of my most important discoveries in the world of uh, friction fire keeping and primitive technologies in general. I hope people get a big kick out of it. All right. So uh, on to the next one, the uh, fire Uber, which uh, kind of sums up all the linear methods for me now. And then we're going to move on to the, uh, 
the next section altogether. All right. Well, there will be an epimethei after the uh, civilized linear variations. All right. Let's keep going.